are these people? Wanted to bring this story, uh, mainly because it's Richard Medhurst, and he doesn't write that often. So figured no. he was writing about something important, and no, it's a topic I don't know much about. I know it's a giant sport in the world, and affects a lot of people. A lot of people watch this, you know, so figured it was probably important to look into. But uh, Richard Medhurst writes in The New Arab. Uh, Israel's team lineup is full of soldier footballers. FIFA's failure to ban it makes it complicit in genocide. Hmm. Sounds like another big sporting event happening in, in Paris. Um, but Richard writes, every Israeli football player is a soldier. Joining the Israeli army is mandatory in order to become a football player in the national team. True. This is one of many reasons why the Palestinian Football Association is asking FIFA to expel Israel and uphold its own rules and regulations. When the Ukraine war began, athletes from Russia and Belarus were forced to compete as neutral athletes. This meant no flag, no anthem, and no connection to the armed forces or support for the war. Not only are all Israeli football players soldiers, but they regularly advertise and promote the Israeli army, posting photos of themselves in their fatigues, and inciting genocide on social media. One Israeli football player, Sean Weissman, asked, why haven't 200 tons of bombs already been dropped on Gaza? He is in the Israeli Air Force. His teammate, Tomer Yosefi, said on Instagram, we'll erase Gaza permanently. Even the Israeli women team put together a montage where they switch back and forth between the Israel Army uniforms and football jerseys. Message is clear. We are not just football players, but soldiers, and proud of it. FIFA claims that football should be impartial and apolitical, yet many Israeli football clubs host receptions for Israeli soldiers, fundraise for them, promote recruitment, and post pro-war propaganda online, and obituaries for dead Israelis. I spoke with Dr. Katerina Pechlovic, head of the Palestine Football Association legal team, leading the charge to expel Israel. She told me that the players should be expelled from football because these are some of the worst and gravest hate speech examples that I've seen in the life in football or sports. The Israeli Football Association even visited an Israeli Air Force base currently taking part in the genocide against Gaza. Over 300 Palestinian athletes have been murdered by Israel since October 7th, including 266 professional football players and 60 children from the youth league. Well, stop. Stop right there. Okay. Yeah. If every Israeli soccer player, I'm going to call it soccer, I don't give a shit. If mm -hmm. every Israeli soccer player, just to insult those motherfuckers, everyone else is football from fair Israel to soccer. All mm -hmm. right. But, but for every soccer player in Israel, all right, that they have on their team, they've murdered like five other Palestinian professional soccer players, professional Palestinian athletes. 266 pro fucking soccer uh huh and yet they're allowed to, and yet they're allowed to yeah 60 children how many teams is that oh 11 on a side yeah sorry continue they're still, they're still doing great from what i hear um so should tell you something israel has killed three players from the palestinian football team the coach of the palestinian olympic football an international FIFA referee and assistant referee were also killed by Israel. Most were murdered in their homes alongside their family. In the occupied West Bank, Israeli forces have killed 11 footballers and detained nine. All sports facilities in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed by Israel, including all 41 football pitches and the headquarters of the Palestine Olympic Committee. Seven football pitches in the West Bank have also been attacked, adding insult to injury. Israel has transformed Gaza's football pitch, pitches into concentration camps where men are stripped, blindfolded, yeah. and forced to sit in stress positions all day. Yarmouk Stadium is one example of this tragedy. Israeli bulldozers <laughs> then destroy the football fields to render them useless, keeping Palestinian captives all the while. Not only have FIFA done nothing about this criminal behavior, they have also tried to evade the issue entirely by postponing it twice. The PFA first proposed Israel's expulsion in May at the FIFA Congress in Bangkok. Rather than allow all 211 members to vote on the matter democratically, FIFA kicked the issue to the FIFA Council, which 
only has 37 members, most of whom are sympathetic to Israel, thereby limiting the Go chance figure. of a suspension. Israeli media confirmed that a vote in the FIFA's Congress was the Israeli Football Association's biggest concern. A meeting was meant to be held on July 20th. However, at the last minute, FIFA postponed the meeting, claiming it hadn't received a report from its legal experts and that the Israelis and Palestinians had requested such an extension. This statement is simply untrue. People close to the matter informed me that the legal report was already delivered to FIFA a week ago. FIFA used the short extension granted to both parties as an excuse to delay the announcement of its legal assessment by another month and a half, namely until after the Olympics. This delay tactic means that Israeli athletes will be able to participate unimpeded. By comparison, FIFA took only four days, four days, to ban Russia's national football team, clubs, and athletes. Yep. FIFA's justification was that Poland, Sweden, and others refused to play against Russia, even behind closed doors in neutral territory. So, I'm going to bring this video because it pertains. This footballer was asked to speak about the war in Ukraine. Instead, he spoke about Palestine and the hypocrisy of the West. Let's check out the footage. Oh, I gotta do this. This is always weird. I gotta like on full screen, then full screen. Very odd. Fix fix your stuff, Google Slides. Um Man, it's so frustrating to see all this shit. <laughs> Volume? Oh. No sound. Gotcha. I got it. But, uh, but you know, we've all seen the the What's what's going on in the world at the moment with Ukraine and nobody's happy with what's going. Nobody should ever accept any any uh, killings in the world, any oppression. Uh, but uh, we've all, we've never been uh, allowed to speak about uh, politics in sports. But all of a sudden now it's it's allowed. So uh, that we are allowed. I hope that the people also uh, look at the oppression everywhere in the world. I mean the Palestinians have been going through that for the past 74 years. And, uh, and crowd uh, claps. But I guess, but I guess because it doesn't fit the narrative of the, of the media of the West, uh, we couldn't uh, talk about it. But now that it's, so we can talk about the Ukraine, we can talk about Palestinians. So please keep that in mind. Thank you very much. I mean, where's the lie? Um, well, they certainly should be able to talk about Palestinians. I, you know, and the fact that they've sunk hundreds of billions of dollars into Ukraine and they've gotten nowhere. Actually, they're way worse off than they were. So, yeah. Yep. Um, let me... Uh, now let's go back to Richie's, to Richie's article here about how cowardly um, and, and, and how disgraceful FIFA is for an international body that's supposed to be protecting athletes and the integrity of sport as something that's supposed to promote, you know, comradeship among countries and international relations. Mm -hmm. Fucking disgrace. However, when it comes to Israel, there are even more countries that refuse to play them, yet FIFA won't ban them. Another pretext for banning Russia with a supposed lack of security for players Officials and fans, Belgium and Italy, recently See? refused to host Israeli matches, citing security concerns. Moreover, Israeli matches in the occupied West Bank present their own set of security challenges. Dr. Pajetlovic tells me that recently in Greece, an Arab guy was beaten half to death by Israeli football fans. Even before October 7th, FIFA had ample grants to ban Israel. Israel's football clubs in the occupied West Bank are illegal just like Israeli settlements. FIFA clearly states that one football association may not play on the territory of another. Dr. Pajetlovic explains the UEFA Secretary General at the time, who instructed the Russian Football Association to stop holding matches in occupied Crimea, was Mr. Infantino, the current FIFA president, who is now completely ignoring the fact that the Israeli Football Association is joining clubs from the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem in its national league. Israel, and perhaps even more concerning, hosting matches in the West Bank, which belongs to the Palestinians. What, what, Israeli... What? what? I, yes? I, wait, they're, they're hosting matches in area that they don't 
Can huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. So Damn. Israeli players are not only violating the Olympic Charter and FIFA statutes and human rights policy, but even the recent court order of the International Court of Justice calling on Israel to abide by Article 1 of the Gen Genocide Convention to prevent and punish genocide. This is a binding order which applies equally to influential public figures such as professional footballers and athletes. The possibility of being expelled from FIFA has sent Israel officials scrambling. Officials mm -hmm. from the Foreign Culture and Sport Ministries, the National Security Council, have been working to torpedo the potential ban. On X, Twitter, the Israeli Foreign Minister openly threatened Jibril Rajoub, the head of the PFA and Palestine Olympic Committee, which, with imprisonment, if he did not drop the request to expel Israel from FIFA. So, okay. There with the balls on these, these guys. Anyway. No one is asking FIFA to mix politics with sports, but rather to simply apply its own rules and be fair. God forbid. But wait a minute. You you know you're the one that's in the right when you're threatening to arrest the guy yeah. that is <laughs> asking to have yeah. you expelled. Ridiculous. Because you're obviously so right that you're going to win the case, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this happens in just about every Holy sport. Shit. It seems like Palestinian athletes everywhere get censored and, you know, everything stacked against them. So, good luck out there, you know? Fuck. But, yeah. Ban Israel from the Olympics. Ban Israel from FIFA. Fuck that. Yep. Um, boo -dee -dee -boo. I don't that's, know what that Sorry, was. that's my thing. I don't know. That was my... I got a alert. <laughs> Don't you love those? To, you're not supposed to even hear that. I know. It's you got your anyway. sound to pump through. Um well, talking about these things is of course why we're demonetized. So you can go to codashv.com slash Indian News Network, scan that QR code on the screen with your little cellular phone, or go in the description below and find the links there. Um very easy to support us financially. Um we appreciate all that you give. And if you can't do that, just who are these easy. people? Like and subscribe, hit the share button, you know, like send it to your friends, send it to your grandma. She she probably needs something to watch. Um That's what she said. Send know. it to your grandma. Otherwise, leave leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Um otherwise, thanks for watching.